There's one very important setting that you want to change here. You're going to see improvements in FPS and input latency. The outer line dots of the crosshair will come in and then they'll touch the main crosshair and then you can fire. What's up guys, Noctilus here. These are the settings that you should change in game if it's your first time playing Valorant or if you're a beginner to the game. These settings will help you, one, increase your FPS and reduce input latency so that you have a much smoother and more responsive game, two, make it easier to locate enemies using audio, three, help you learn the maps more quickly, and four, help you learn movement error and firing error more quickly as well so that you can improve your aim. Overall, these settings help to make sure that you have the easiest time possible learning Valorant as a beginner. Okay guys, so we're here in the game and the first thing that we're going to do is click this cog icon in the top right of the screen to access the settings, then this menu will pop up. So in the general tab, the first thing that we're going to want to change is the enemy highlight color. You'll want to change this to yellow, either deuteranopia or yellow protanopia. Some people use red on icebox, but for the most part, you're going to be using yellow. Tactical callouts in chat should be on. For sensitivity, I recommend anything between 0.32 to 0.4 if you're using an 800 DPI mouse. If you're using a 400 DPI mouse, that would be 0.64 to 0.8. Scope sensitivity multiplier can be anything between 1 and 1.1. 1 .1. um, I have invert mouse set to off and beta raw input buffer set to off. You can test having beta raw input buffer set to on. It's supposed to smooth out your mouse movement, but generally I find that I, it's fine with it off. Moving on to the map section, this is where it's going to make it much easier to learn as a beginner if you have the right map set up. For rotate, we have it as fixed. For fixed orientation, we have it always the same. For keep player centered, we have this as off. For minimap size, we have it as 1.2. Minimap zoom as 0.9. Minimap vision cones as on and show map region names as always. So what this does is it makes a really big map at the top left of your screen and you can see everything that's happening on the map, including the different areas, what line of sight your teammates have and so on and so forth. And it keeps the map in the same orientation all the time so that the different sites are always in the same place and you can learn where those are and what corridors there are, what paths there are between the sites and to the different locations. All these other settings for privacy, um, you can keep as whatever you want. In the other section, you can change first person handedness to left or right, depending on what your preference is. I have show mature content on, show corpses off, show blood on, explicit language filter off, instability indicators on, network buffering minimum. If you have poor network or not the best network, you can change this to moderate or maximum. Show bullet tracers on, show spectator count on, and then the rest of these settings you can set to whichever you prefer. By default, they're all off. Some things to note here, show corpses off will replace all the dead bodies with holograms and sometimes the holograms can get in the way of seeing the enemies and that can be annoying but for the most part they're generally better than showing the dead bodies and also it gives you a little bit of an fps boost so if fps is an issue for you definitely turn this off Show blood on will let, allow you to see blood spurts that come out of the enemies if you're wall banging them or you hit them through a box so you can tell that you've hit them Show bullet tracers on is also very important because it helps you see where your bullets are going, but also if somebody is firing at you through a smoke, it'll allow you to see where they're firing from. Moving on to the controls tab, one of the things to note here is that you can actually create a keybind profile for each agent and it'll change automatically when you choose a different agent. So you can set that if you want, but I just use the same keybind profile for all agents. In the abilities section, I have ability one and two bound to buttons on my mouse instead of Q and E because I don't want to move my fingers away from the movement keys. For ability three, I have that as C because I only have two extra buttons on my mouse and um, C is a pretty easy button to hit. For the ultimate, I've left that as X. You don't use your ultimate that frequently, maybe like three, four times a match. WASD for the movement, I've left this as default. Default movement mode should be run, walk should be left shift, toggle walk should be off. For jump, I would recommend setting the alternate keybind for jump to mouse wheel down, and this will help you with bunny hopping, which we'll cover in a later video. Crouch should be set to left control and toggle crouch should be set to off. Fly up is spacebar, fly down is left control. Moving on to the equipment tab, I have aim down sights and sniper rifle aim set to hold. 
These are set to toggle by default, and some people leave that as toggle, but I prefer hold just from previous games. You can set this to whichever you like. If we move down to the equipment section, cycle to next weapon, I've removed the keybind, and cycle to previous weapon, I've also removed the keybind um, because these used to be set to the mouse wheel, but we want to use the mouse wheel for bunny hopping. Under equip last used item, I have this set to Q. You can just use the one, two, three, four keys to swap weapons, and this is not necessary, so this is optional. Moving on to the communication tab, I have party voice push to talk key removed because I don't use the party voice push to talk key. If you're in a party, you're probably going to be using Discord. So this one doesn't matter. However, the team voice push to talk key does matter. And because you need to talk to the people on your team in game, they might not be in your Discord. So I have this set to the middle mouse button because that's a really easy button to hit and you use it pretty often. I have the ping wheel keybind removed because I don't use the ping wheel. I do use the caution one occasionally. So I have that set to Z, which is easy to hit. And everything else is left as default. Under the interface tab, I have toggle cursor set to the right arrow key because this used to be the middle mouse button by default but I changed the middle mouse button to the team voice push to talk key. Everything else is left as default. Moving on to the video tab this is where you're going to see improvements in FPS and input latency. So these settings will help you have a smoother and more responsive game. Display mode should be set to full screen. If you use window full screen or you use window mode your FPS will definitely take a hit. Your resolution should be set to something that allows you to maintain an FPS that is the same as or higher than your monitor refresh rate. And your monitor refresh rate is the number here in parentheses that ends with the hertz. You can see here that my monitor is 144 hertz. That means when I go in game, I want an FPS that is always 144 or higher. If you are able to hit whatever your monitor refresh rate is at the resolution setting that you've selected, that's fine. But if you're not able to achieve those FPS numbers, then you need to lower your resolution to something lower so that your computer can produce a higher FPS at that resolution. For limit FPS and battery, I have this set to off. For limit FPS in menus, I have this set to on and I have it set to my monitor refresh rate. You can set it to off if you want. Limit FPS in background, I have this as on and set to 60, but this also doesn't matter that much. Limit FPS always, I have this set to off. For max FPS always, this doesn't matter because I have it set to off. So if you set this to on, I would recommend setting this to something that is either your monitor refresh rate or double your monitor refresh rate. But if you're just trying to get the maximum FPS possible, then you can set this to off. For NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, you can set this to on plus boost if you're using a non-RTX card. But if you're using an RTX card, generally you should get better performance just setting this to on. If you're using an older NVIDIA graphics card, generally on plus boost is going to be more helpful for your FPS. Moving on to the graphics quality tab, I have multi-threaded rendering set to on, material quality set to low, texture set to low, detail set to low, UI set to low, vignette set to off, vsync set to off, anti-aliasing set to none, anisotropic filtering set to 1x, improve clarity set to off, experimental sharpening set to off, bloom off, distortion off, and shadows off. There are a few settings here which could be potentially useful. First one being improve clarity. Improve clarity increases the contrast slightly and makes everything a little bit more crisp a little bit more visible, but generally you're going to take a 20 to 30 FPS hit by turning this on. If your FPS is well above your monitor refresh rate, you can probably turn this on and get the benefit of that increased contrast and that increased clarity. If you need the FPS, then just leave this as off. The other setting here that you might potentially want to turn on is Bloom. If you have this on, it's easier to see certain abilities from certain agents. Just having it off will result in a higher FPS. I recommend setting it to off if you need the most FPS possible, but if you your FPS is well above your monitor refresh rate, then you can set this to on. Under the stats tab, there are certain settings that we have to turn on here to allow us to see what our FPS is, what our render latency is, and input latency is, and also how our network performance is. So we have client FPS set to text only, and we have game latency set to text only, render latency set to text only, and packet loss set to text only. Moving to the audio tab, there's one very important setting that you want to change here, and this setting will allow you to hear enemy footsteps much more accurately, and it'll allow you to pinpoint where exactly enemies are. And that setting is enable HRTF. Make sure that this is on. Also, make sure that speaker configuration is set to stereo. So HRTF is basically like a virtual surround system. When you use HRTF, it'll allows you to hear where different enemies are based on their location in the game, which is how people tell where enemies are based on their footsteps. For voice chat, you can set these settings to whatever you like, but as I mentioned, I set the team push to talk key to mouse button 3. And under voiceover, 
Make sure you turn agent flavor to off. So agent flavor just adds random phrases that the characters say. They don't actually have any tactical value. It's just extra noise when there's already so much going on in the game. So it helps to turn this off. Gameplay sounds are set to on. Tactical callouts are set to on. Announcer is set to on. And VOIP Dex Flavor VL is set to off. Moving on to the crosshair section, these are the crosshair settings that I use, but we'll do another video later on talking about all the different beginner crosshairs and which ones are good for what. This is what I use right now. Use advanced options should be set to on, show spectated players crosshair set to on, fade crosshair or firing error set to off, disable crosshair set to off. If we move over to the primary sub tab in the crosshair settings, crosshair color is set to green, outlines is set to on, outline opacity is set to one, Outline thickness is set to 1, center dot is set to off, override firing error offset is set to off, override all primary crosshairs is set to off. For the inner line section, show inner lines is set to on, inner line opacity is set to 1, inner line length is set to 4, inner line thickness is set to 2, inner line offset is set to 3. Movement error is set to off, movement error multiplier is set to one, firing error is set to off, and firing error multiplier is set to one. So these settings will create a crosshair that never changes. Part of your crosshair never changes. So you can see the uh, area that's blinking right now that I'm turning on and off in the crosshair. That won't change, that stays always the same. For the outer lines, we've actually set this to on and I've set outer line opacity to 0.5, outer line length to 2, outer line thickness to 2, outer line offset to 4, movement error to off, movement error multiplier to 1, firing error to on, and firing error multiplier to 1. What this does is outside of your base crosshair, it puts four dots that will move if you have firing error. These are the crosshair settings that I use now, but if you're learning to stop moving before shooting, or if you're completely new to the game and that concept is foreign to you, then I recommend setting movement error to on and firing error to off, and then changing your outer line offset to eight instead of four. And what this will do is it'll create the same crosshair as I had just now, but instead of the outer lines, the outer four dots moving outwards when I burst or spray, the outer four dots will move outwards when I'm moving. And this is the part that's going to help you really learn movement error and firing error when you're a beginner. Because when you move, you're less accurate in Valorant. And when you burst or when you spray in Valorant, you're also less accurate. So you need to know when you are 100% accurate and when you're losing accuracy. These outer lines will help you learn a lot of concepts later on, such as stopping before shooting, counter strafing, and also bursting and spraying. You'll always know that you're completely accurate when these four outer line dots are touching your main crosshair and you're not accurate when the outer line dots are not touching your crosshair. And so whenever you move, these outer line dots will move outwards and you'll see that you're not accurate. And when you stand still, you'll see that the four outer line dots are touching your main crosshair and that you are accurate. You'll basically be moving, you let go of the movement keys and then you stop. The outer line dots of the crosshair will come in and then they'll touch the main crosshair and then you can fire. And that will help develop the discipline for stopping before shooting if you're a newer player. Moving on to the aim down sights tab, I have this set as on for copy primary crosshair and what that does is it just uses your primary crosshair when you aim down the sights. For sniper scope, I have this all set to default so there's nothing to change here. So these are the crosshair settings that I recommend for beginners, but there are many other options out there and there are many other recommendations for beginners as well. So if you want to find out about these other recommendations, hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell down below and check out my other video on other beginner crosshair settings that you can choose from up here. Thanks guys.